as we were just reading to you about the prince and princesses, that was a very good example. Because being in a material body and everything so physical around you, it gets to be very difficult to try to discern between your spiritual self and your physical self. And sometimes with the material world, things become so hectic, so rush, rush mode and so forth. It's very difficult to glimpse into your spiritual self, to hang on and keep it focused. And that is what you must do. That is why you're here. You're not here just to live in a physical world, enjoy physical things. You're here to learn who and what you are, that you are spirit, that you were created by the Father, Mother, God, that you go beyond what you can just look around here and see. You go within, set in your own temple, relax, quiet your mind, and let the Father speak to you. And you'll have many people say, oh, well, I sit and do that. I don't hear nothing. No, because he doesn't come in. And actually, like I'm talking to you, he doesn't do that. He comes in. He embraces you. He holds you. And waves and sensations flow through you. And all of a sudden, you go, oh, I never thought about that. Oh, what a wonderful thought. That is the way he speaks to you. He don't sit you down and say, oh, well, now listen to me. I got this for you. I got that for you. And most people think that's the way it works. That isn't the way it works. Everybody calls it intuition, a sense. Many times in your world, you'll hear many people refer to the sixth sense. What is a sixth sense? Well, they can't tell you that, but you have the sixth sense. They don't understand. They know there's something there, but what it is, they can't explain it. What it is, they have no idea. How you use it, they don't know. Just somebody's got this whatever, and they can do this and this, and that's it. And that's about as far as it goes with them. Because they're afraid to explore. They're afraid to ask. They're afraid to try to figure it out. But what is there to be afraid of? You're in the light. You're surrounded with light. Your love, your light, that's all you are. You're encased in a physical body. It's made of fiber, muscle, tissue, whatever else you want to throw in there, bones. There you are. But think about it. When they take and find a body that's been out in the elements for maybe months, years, there's bones there that the animals haven't carried off, few here, few there. But there's no muscle, there's no tissue, there's no skin, there's nothing there, just bone. And if the bones lay there long enough, pretty soon there isn't even any bone. They're all gone too, they just disintegrate, vanish. So what's left? Most people say, nothing, it's all gone. Oh no, it's not. Your spirit is left. And you can't kill your spirit, you can't bury it, you can't forget it, you can't leave it, you can't ignore it, you can't acknowledge that it doesn't exist. Because as soon as you enter our world and open your eyes, you're whole, you're all in one piece, you're beautiful, you're love and light. And as you progress, move forward, your light becomes brighter and brighter, your physical appearance becomes less and less because you realize you are spirit, you are love and light. You don't need the trappings of a material world. You're free. You don't sleep, you don't eat. You can have all the knowledge at your fingertips that you wish to enjoy and on goes life. That is why you're here. You're here encased in a body to teach you the lessons of mankind, of struggle, learning. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard, but the whole purpose is for you to learn, to be able to discern between your spiritual and your physical. For you to be able to understand that you are God's creation, to, for you to understand that you are also spirit as well as physical, and you have many beautiful options before you down the path of life. 
Many times you will hear your world, the saying in your world, life is what you make it. And that is exactly right. You have people in your world that will get out and work and strive and do everything they can do to better themselves. And do you have those in your world that go through life and sit in a corner and whine and cry because nobody's feeding them, keeping them, and paying their bills and doing this for them, that for them, and something else for them because they feel they're owed. But nobody's been able to figure out so far that I know of what it is they're owed. Why they think they're any different than anybody else that has to do things in life to make it right, make it work, and make it what it's supposed to be. But there again, each person is an individual. Each person has free will, and each person is entitled to do whatever they please. But always remember, you have the key to unlock the door. But be careful of what door you unlock. Because the door you unlock, you may not like. And regardless which door you unlock, and if you don't like the one you unlock, it may not work out well because you may go down the road for five years and everything's fine. You may go down the road for 10 years, everything's fine. But at some point in time, nobody knows when, there will be accountability for the wrong one. But most people in your world will be the first to blame somebody else for it. It wasn't their fault they opened the wrong door. It was everybody else around them. Yeah, it was all their problem, their fault. If it wouldn't have been for them, they wouldn't have had that problem. Lo and behold, it wouldn't have mattered. They still had that problem. Because there was something there that they needed to show them, to explain to them, to help them grow, strengthen them, and make them wiser. But what they do with that is up to that individual. Some people grasp it, learn, and understand what the problem was. Others still brush it off on others and go on through life just like they always did. So the path is yours to choose. That's what we're trying to bring in. You are the one that's in charge of you. You are the one that chooses your path. You are the one that makes your decisions. Yes, you let yourself be influenced by other people. Yes, sometimes you feel someone is wiser than you and perhaps has a little better knowledge of what would be better for you. So you give them the benefit of the doubt. But the worst thing to do when you are in that situation, when it doesn't work out, is to blame the other person. You have to just look at them, surround them in the light, God's love, and bless them. Maybe their decision wasn't right for you, or maybe they influenced you the wrong way. But for your own progression, your own path, your own self, you cannot hold a grudge, resentment, any kind of un good thoughts, as we call them. Because that's why you're here. You're going to be going. You're going to be stepping on the stones and every once in a while step off and get your feet wet. You're going to be going down the path and every once in a while trip over a log or a rock. Why? Because the Father wants you to open your door. Go in, sit down in your temple, and talk to him. The Father wants you to follow your light, to see within that you are spirit. You are a child of God. You have many beautiful things that you may reap, enjoy, and have in this lifetime. Or you can throw it all away and be miserable through your whole journey on the life plane. The choice is yours. But he is always there for you, holding you up, guiding you, giving you nourishment, courage, faith, love, and understanding. You are the one that has to receive it. It is there. It is yours for the taking. But if you don't want to take it, nobody can make you. If you don't want to try to see who and what you are and do what you're supposed to do, then that's your choice. But all you need to do is go within, be still, and listen. And you'll find peace, contentment, and happiness. You'll find many answers to many questions. 
you will figure out which path you are to follow and how to follow it with the least trouble. You will begin to understand how beautiful life truly is. And you have a wonderful saying in your world, and I wish to expand it. Stop and smell the roses. Well, stop and look at the landscape, the beautiful trees around you, the beautiful sky above your head. Look all around you and see what was created for your enjoyment. Now, what is man doing with the most of it? Turning it into buildings and cement. And that's as far as his vision goes. It is time for him to open the doors and look beyond. And give thanks to the Father for everything out there. Everybody complains about birds chirping and singing and doing this and that. And this one and that one and the other one. But put it this way. Your world would not be where it is today if it wasn't for all these things that God created. If God just made a piece of land flat and bare and nothing on it and put Adam and Eve on it, so to speak, how far would mankind evolve? A few years, wouldn't be nothing left but a dry piece of land with nothing on it. Man needs all these things to make the world a beautiful place. Everybody already knows all these wonderful trees take carbon dioxide and oxide and all this other side out of the air and make it breathable for mankind. So mankind's going through and cutting down all the trees. So 100 years from now, are they all going to run around with oxygen mask on to breathe? Man doesn't use his head for anything. It is all right to build. It is all right to be prosperous. It is all right to have wonderful things. But all in moderation, not greed. So when you do things, think about it. When you have questions, be still and listen. Ask the Father. When you're in doubt, work with your forces. When you're upset, sad, look at the happier times. Look for happier moments. They're coming. They're there. Think about this. Think about that. And let go of it. Don't dwell on it. Release it as quickly as possible, and it can't poison your system. But people have the human tendency, dwell, dwell, dwell. And that's your job. Learn to chop it off. Give it a minute of your time, a minute of your concern. So after two or three minutes, bless it and throw it out. It's hard, but you've got to work, 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 and you can do it. And as you do that, you begin to feel relaxed. You begin to feel at peace. You begin to understand many things. And it may not cure every problem you have. We're not saying that. But we're saying it will make you feel happy within give you peace, contentment, love, and you'll just feel like you're the most beautiful being in the world. And that's what we're striving for because you are. You're God's child, your light, your love. We'll leave this with you. God bless you. God bless you.